sir. I see you need a new belt. And that's a nice man bun you're sporting. Oh, thanks for noticing my man bun. Took me a long time to grow. New belt? I was hoping maybe you could just glue this one together with that fancy glue that you got. You mean the HV350? This is more for plastics. This isn't for gluing belts. You need to just buy a new belt. Oh, well, let me see if it's in the budget. I thought you were Terrell Fixes All anyway. How much is this gonna run me anyway? That belt costs $20, Brendan. $20? That's ridiculous. More shops these days. They just wanna sell you new instead of just fixing this. There's really nothing wrong with this. I, I just don't get it. This belt is shredded into a million pieces. It can't be fixed. It's 20 bucks or take a hike. Oh, I'll be hiking later on Podunk Trail. Great little spot. I seem to have misplaced my cash. Oh, wait. Here it is. Forgot I put it there. This doesn't have mandruff on it, does it? It might. <laughs> well, gotta go. Tally ho. <laughs> Oh, you again. I see you're back with more worn out parts. What do you need this time? Wore out? These just need to be soldered up. They'll be good to go. It's gonna cost you more to have me weld them up. Why don't you just buy new ones? Ah, <sighs> here we go again, trying to sell me new parts when these are perfectly fine. You can't just solder them up and have me on my way or what? No, I'm not gonna waste my time welding them up. You need new parts. Just buy new ones. You know what? Just forget it. I'll take it to Gordy's over there, all right? He'll do it for me. Okay, sounds good. Have a nice day. Come back again. Pterodactyl here. And today we're going to see if we can get this old 1978 Lawn Boy running, which we got for free. This is a model R7266, and the R stands for recoil. It's the recoil start mower. Look at it, just a basic push mower from 1978. And as you can tell, it has no safeties on it. Doesn't have that bail that you pull down. That came later on, I think in uh, 1980 or 81, they started putting those on there. So we got this old lawn boy and we're gonna see if we can get it running. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I was pulling on it, it felt a little weak on compression. So I'm gonna take the plug out, and we're gonna do a compression test on it. All right. This thing is real weak on compression. Now I'm gonna try something which we used to do back in the day. And that is, I'm gonna spray some lubricant down in the cylinder. Sometimes that'll bring the compression back up on these two cycles, because they're just dry. So I'm just gonna use some, some WD-40. We'll see if we can get the compression back up a little bit. If not, next thing I'm going to do is pull the muffin off and take a look at the piston. See if it's all scored up. Now on this long boy, the muffin is up underneath. Flip it on the side. And this is the muffin right here, this big plate. We're going to take that off, the blade. And then we're going to take the blade hub off. Give it a little zap because this is on a taper. And then these are 7 
Now, a common problem with these lawn boys back in the day is you would always have to periodically clean the exhaust ports. They would plug up from the two cycle mix. Because I remember working at Ferrell's, we would have to clean these muffins out. Another common problem with these lawn boys is they'd blow that lower crank seal out. We were always putting new crank seals in. So let me get a flashlight. These ports are pretty plugged up. Two of them are. I see a big score mark over there. But it definitely got some scoring. Now back in the day they used to say to use a wooden dowel rod to clean out these ports because they were afraid of like damaging the piston. But we used to just use a screwdriver. Get the piston down. And we never had any problems by using a screwdriver and jamming it in there to clean out the ports. They tell you to take a dowel rod, I forget, I think it was like a 3 8 dowel rod and grind a little tape around it. Yeah, a lot of carbon. I'm going to take some compressed air. I'm going to blow that out. Now maybe we can get a little better peak at the piston. I mean, it don't look that bad. Other than the one big score mark I see, which you probably can't see on camera, that's over here. The crank seal is still in there. I'm sure it doesn't have enough compression to start. Now this has got solid state ignition on it. This was another problem with these old long boys. Is those solid state ignitions would go out. Now this engine is called a D600. Now check this out. This is an old long boy clipboard from when I used to work at my brother Farrell's shop. And I've had this thing for years this clipboard and for some reason I hung on to it but on the back here it's got the three engines at the time the F the D400 which is on the real old lawn boys that got points and condenser in here and we got the D600 solid-state ignition and the reason I know this is the D600 is because we got this carburetor here that's got this throttle shaft. And if you look at this F engine, also has solid state ignition. There's the ignition module there. But this carburetor is a plastic carburetor that's got an air vein on it. Here's the air vein. And it had this speed control. So this is ours. Here's our speed control is right here. This is how you, this had two speeds. A low and a high. And you would just flip that lever and that would give you a higher, higher engine RPM. Pretty interesting, huh? This old stuff. Oh, look what else I got. I love my lawn boy. 
and a lawn boy belt buckle. Hey, 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 I got some lawn boy stuff. Some lawn boy swag. So let's see if it's got any spark before we go any further. Again, this thing is old. Parts may be non-existent. I do have some new old stock lawn boy parts I got from my brother Farrell. Tester. What is this cheap? Look at that cheap clip. The thing already bent all up on me. I didn't even get to use it one time. Switch is on. You know what it is, this is touching here. It's touching the deck. Well, we got spark. I don't think we got enough compression to uh, make it flyer. All right, I'm gonna put the muffkin back on in the blade. We're gonna put a plug in it. I'm gonna try to lubricate this recoil, so. I remember this recoil, I remember doing a ton of recoil repairs on these old lawn boys. I'm just gonna try to oil that spring up. Growling a little bit, that seemed to help. Let me put the muffin back on in the blade and, and we'll go from there. Now I got the muffin on, now I gotta put the blade on. Hey, I said blade and muffin. <laughs> now I remember back in the day they wanted you, when, they, when you'd reinstall these blades and the hub, they wanted you to have the blade lined up with the piston and crankshaft assembly. So here's the air filter. Here's the cylinder heads on this side. And they would want you to line it up. Something about vibration. Wouldn't vibrate or something less. I think I kind of remember we used to just put them back on and they didn't seem to. It didn't seem to vibrate or run any different. They always had a lot of technical nonsense. So I'm gonna pull the air filter out. And I'm gonna get my little syringe. Cause I don't wanna spray carb spray in there cause it's got no lubricant. So I'm gonna suck up a little two cycle mix and squirt it in there. So that way we got some lubricant in there. All right, let's see what happens. Put some in there. Let's try that again. Get past the reeds. Now let's try it. Yeah, they don't have enough compression. Well, let's tear it apart. All right, there's five screws that hold this cover on. Now pull this cover off. There's our solid state module. This was another way we would check that module. 
in the shop if we had one with no spark we would disconnect the the kill wire from the module and then pull it if it still had no spark then we knew the module was bad this way we can eliminate if this was the problem the on off switch so if you disconnected this and you pulled it still had no spark your module was bad all right now I'm going to go ahead and pull the flywheel. 11 sixteenths. Then I'm just going to put the nut back on, flush. Now find me a good spot to pry right here. Oh, wow. Was that? Oh, no. I thought that was a bad crank turn. So I'll put a little pressure on this and give it a nice sharp blow right in the center. You just ruined that, Carl. You just ruined that engine by doing that. Even though I cannot explain how you ruined it, you just did. So here's our, here's our system. This is our governor's system. It's got these weights on it that come out. This is our governor spring right here which is hooked to this lever. So by turning this lever, it puts more tension on that spring. So like with any governor, if you could put more tension on this spring, you can get higher RPM out of it. So I need a pair of side cutters. Take that flywheel key out. All right, I found me a small pair of side cutters. To pop that key out, I'm gonna throw that in here. This comes off, there's a spring under here, there's a washer, there's this little plastic collar, and then we can lift this up, I'm going to take this off, that's another thing, you could bend on this, this tab, there was a setting on these if we can get this thing running and back together. I remember when you would have all this back together and on there, you would hold down on the shaft and you would push down on this and then there had to be a certain amount of gap between here and there. I can remember that from back in the day. All right, so let's take this off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up. No, all right. I'm just gonna take that, take that ignition module off and then I'm gonna take these screws out and we'll get this cover off and just lay it out of the way. And like any coil, you know, when you go to put this back on, this is slotted, you'd have to set an air gap in there. And it's usually between like 10 and 12 thousandths business card thickness as long as you got a gap in there it's really not that critical some people over technify everything all the time it's like yeah if you get it close it, it'll run not gonna really affect it majorly all right so this is still hooked to here so underneath is a screw a flathead screw with a little metal tab and I can remember back in the day, because I haven't worked on one of these old wall boys like this, probably since the 1980s. So I remember we used to go to Sears and get this offset screwdriver set they used to have. Remember we would buy these just for this. Alright, now I'm going to lose all my parts. Now I need something to put them parts in. I need a tray. So here's the screw I need to loosen up. Because we don't want to bend this little tab here. So now I got to get in there with that offset screwdriver and loosen that up. But I just want you to see where it's at. So now I was able to loosen up that screw and get our governor spring out that went around the end of this. Then I was able to pull the rope out and put the old slip knot in there to hold the rope out of my way. 
So now we can get that mortise engine. Here we put these parts in my tray, that governor spring. So there we are, we're at that point. So now I think I'll just go ahead and pull the blade and muffkin. <laughs> Name of my cat's blade and muffkin. I'll pull the blade and muffkin back off and then I'll just go ahead and pull these three bolts that are holding the engine to the deck so then we can just put the engine up on the bench. But you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you do that in the first place, Terrell? Because it's got all these plastic parts on here and you're gonna, I don't have no good way of holding that engine on the bench. I don't have like an engine stand for this. So it's a lot easier to strip these plastic parts off first, then take what's left of the engine and put it on the bench. That's why I did it this way. If you wanna take the engine off first and do it the other way, you just go right ahead. I don't care. But this is the way I did it. I already removed these two, half inch. And there's the last one. Now the engine's off. Now, on the deck here, they've got a silicone gasket. There's a little metal stiffener in here. Let me fry that out. And then this is your exhaust gasket. The silicone gasket. Now I remember there were some of these in them parts my brother Farrell gave me. I think I sold a bunch of them on eBay. I don't know if I have any of these left. And the only reason I sold them is because I never thought I would be doing a video on one of these antique lawn boy engines. So I'll have to go and find out. So now I'm gonna, here's that little screw. Remember I was telling you? With this little metal tab that we had to use the offset screwdriver on. There it is up underneath there. So now I'm gonna remove these four cylinder bolts and we're gonna pull the cylinder off the piston. Those look to be like three eighths. Yeah. And then we're gonna see if we got some stuck rings. And then that's as far as the video is probably gonna go to this point because if I can't locate any parts, then we're not gonna be able to fix it. I'd have to go look in those new old stock parts. I remember there were bins and bins of lawn boy parts that my brother Farrell gave me because he was a lawn boy dealer. And these are old parts. And I remember we were going through them parts not long ago and I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever sell any of this stuff. So you know what I did with it? And you're gonna be horrified. Threw them all in garbage. Carol, why would you do that? You threw away thousands of dollars in lawn boy parts. Again, I can't hang on to all this crap all the time. That's why my brother got rid of it. He didn't want all that crap clogging up his shop. He don't fix that old stuff anymore. But maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe there's some rings I saved. If not, I'll have to go on the inner screen and see if, if there's somebody out there selling them. Boy, they don't make that. Look at that screw. You know, the only easier way to get to that would be to pull this top plate off here. And I think if I remember, I think there's needle bearings in the top. I'd have to look at a parts breakdown. Usually when you pull it apart, all the needle bearings fall out. 
and you got to take grease to hold them back in place and put it back together. I just got some Morse code right there. Dee -dee -dee. Somebody sending me a message. Help me! Help me, Terrell! Help me! My engine doesn't run! Yep, they're sending out an SOS. Help me, Terrell. I can't get my engine to run. And I've done everything to it except the right thing. Could you please fix it over the phone? All right, give it a little love tap. Break her loose. Ah. Let's feel the cylinder. See if we feel any major scratches. Uh, usually, if it ran lean or ran, you know, they didn't run enough oil in it, your score marks will be on the exhaust side. And then usually if you got a vacuum leak or something, it'll be on the, sometimes on the intake side. There's a little bit of transfer. Let me get that light again. What do I keep doing with that flashlight? You know what, I lose them lights all the time. So we got some scoring on the side. So there's some aluminum aluminum transfer from the piston. Now let's look at the piston. That's as far up as it comes. Yeah. Got a bunch of galling right here. This ring isn't stuck. This one is. Everything else looks all right. So as long as we don't break the ring, there, it's out of its groove. So that might just be carbon scoring. That may just be a result of carbon from them ports getting in there and scratching that up. And that's not from me cleaning them ports just a few minutes ago. That carbon isn't gonna score up that piston by me pulling on it a couple of times. So, we're gonna do a, just a real cheap rebuild on it. I'm gonna try to clean up them score marks as best I can with some real fine sandpaper. I'm gonna take my dental tools because I don't need them for my teeth. I got perfect teeth. What would I need dental tools for on my teeth? I'm gonna take my dental tools and I'm gonna clean all that carbon. Look at all that carbon that's built up in that ring groove. And then I'm gonna take some muriatic acid to clean that aluminum off of that cylinder. And another thing that works is oven cleaner. Oven cleaner's got some kind of acid in it that attacks aluminum too. You ever spray oven cleaner on a piece of tin foil? It eats it all up and starts smoking and stuff. It's dangerous, don't do it. But that'll, that'll do that. We wanna eat that aluminum off because that's gonna keep the rings from seeding. And then I'll probably put one of my hones in there, kind of scratch it up a little bit I'll look and see if I got new rings, but these rings are not broken.
and uh, maybe we can just get away with uh, doing that and getting it running again. This this engine doesn't run at real high RPMs like a, like these new modern chainsaws. This is relatively a low RPM two cycle engine, so we can do this cheating. You know, if this was a like a stilt chainsaw or a Husqvarna, you know, one that runs 17, 18, 20,000 RPMs, yeah, you're going to want to replace the piston and all that stuff. And But this thing, what does it run? 3,600 RPMs? That's nothing. So that's what we'll do. And then we'll see if we can bring it back to life. Bring it to life, the lawn boy Daryl. Bring it back to life! It's alive, it's alive! I love my lawn boy. Not really. So now it's the next day, and I've taken the piston out of the lawn boy. And then I cleaned it all up, and I sanded on the piston, kind of smoothed it out, and I used some 600 sandpaper on it. Now there's still some grooves in there, you're not going to get all them grooves out, but you want to make it smooth. Any kind of aluminium transfer, it kind of raises the metal. So I sanded it smooth with some 600 sandpaper and then I cleaned it real good. I used these dental tools, so that's why I'm dressed like a dentist, because I got the rubber gloves and the mask on, because I'm like a dentist now even though my teeth are perfect. Again, I told you that yesterday. So I went in and cleaned all the grooves, got all the carbon out of there, cleaned it up real good. Then I went online and I went to our friends at ProPartsDirect.net. I went to their online parts looked up and I looked at that 7266 I looked up. The Lawn Boy model and I found the piston ring part number for this engine, which is a D601 for our particular model. And then I went, and they're, and they're discontinued, by the way. You can't get them anymore. Then I went out and looked in them parts I got from my brother, Farrell. And the part number I found was 679252. And I had a set of rings from my brother, Farrell. Woo! So then I went and put the old rings in the bore, took the piston, looked at the end gap, decent end gap, not too bad, it's not real tight, it's acceptable, we probably could have used these over. Then I got the new old stock ones from Brother Farrell. Stuck them in there. And look, even got a little tighter gap. So that's good. We're going to have compression. Woo! Compression now! But now we have to remove that aluminium transfer that's in the bore. We got to get that aluminium out of there. Remember I told you about the muriatic acid. Now this is another reason you need to wear the mask and the gloves and you should do this outside. Don't do this in your shop. This muriatic acid, I know a lot of people use it in swimming pools. They use it on concrete. Severe burns, vapor is harmful. This is some nasty stuff. Now watch, when I take the lid off, there'll probably be some fumes and stuff. You'll probably be able to see some smoke come out of there. It's some nasty, yeah, you can see, I don't know if the camera can get it, but you can see some, some fumes. So we got the door open here at the shop. I'm wearing this mask. And I'm gonna brush this on, and now watch. 
See what it does to that aluminium? It'll start foaming up. See how it's foaming up? It's eating that aluminium off the steel. Now I got a little drip going here towards the top because this has got a steel sleeve in here. And this stuff smells nasty. I've done this on aluminum transfer on uh, crankshafts. We don't want it to get on the top of the head there. Even the cameraman saying, man, this stuff is smell this smells nasty. Good thing we got the door open. And then if you want to uh you know kind of keep it from eating away at the metal. Rinse it in water. Take your garden hose and rinse it off. You can see all the fumes coming off of there. Nasty stuff. Now some of it got on the top of the cylinder here because it's got a metal sleeve in it and it's starting to eat at the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it over, over here and I'm gonna take the garden hose and I'm gonna rinse it off. And that'll kind of neutralize it. That's why people use it in swimming pools. They spray a bunch of water on it and then they neutralize it. So if you're gonna do this, see, now it ain't smoking anymore. Make sure you wear protective gloves, a mask, Eye protection, that's why I got all this on. You gotta be careful when you're working with acid. So now it's ate off all that little aluminum transfer. Now I can go in with my, uh, my ball hone, scratch it up a little bit, and then we'll be able to reassemble this lawn boy and get this thing working again. I'm gonna take this brush, rinse it off in water, put the cap back on. This is nasty stuff, let me tell you, boy. Don't mess around with this muriatic acid. See? They use it for cleaning concrete. And it does something for the water for swimming pools. I don't know, I ain't got a swimming pool, I don't know. I just swim in Podunk Lake. And I'll neutralize that and then I'll let that dry. Oh yeah, one other thing I want to tell you about removing carbon. You know what else works good for removing carbon? Back in the day we were told, hacksaw blade, the edge of a hacksaw blade. You can use it for scraping carbon off. And then these uh, dental tools you can find at flea markets and stuff. That's how I got in there and I cleaned all that carbon out of there because these piston rings are like the teeth on a human being. Okay, got all that aluminum that was smeared all in the cylinder. Got that all cleaned off with the acid. Ran the hone down there, lightly honed it. Then I took this and washed it in soap and water. Now I know what you're thinking. What's that bag in the background that says musty on there? <laughs> I needed a new wash tub for the shop and the bag of parts that came with the wash tub it said musty on there isn't that something spelled different but I thought I would share that with you all right so now we're ready to reassemble the engine so I dug out 
this long boy mechanics manual that I had. And I bookmarked a couple of spots in here of stuff that I mentioned earlier. Now remember I mentioned about the governor and I forgot until I opened this book and started thumbing through it that you had to have this special tool. Now I have that special tool somewhere, I can't find it. But it's a special governor tool and you push down on that and you push down on the throttle shaft and you should have a sixteenth of an inch for this D600 engine. And then there's some other models where it's an eighth of an inch. But you had to have that special tool. So I remembered that. And I'm like, I have a tool somewhere. I don't know where, but I'll find it. And then when I was removing the flywheel, because I know how you keyboard cowboys are. Jenny, now you need a flywheel puller, Terrell. You're going to ruin it. And look, that's how you remove the flywheel. The guy's holding it up with his fingers and he's whacking it with a plastic hammer. Just like I did. And here's another tip if you're working on these lawn boys. That's how you put that woodruff key back in. That's how they want it done. And see how it says key on there? You need to turn that and line that up with the key when you reassemble it. That's why it says key. They want that lined up with the key when you put the flywheel back on. So they're showing you right and wrong with the woodruff key. They don't want the woodruff key like that. They want it like that when you put the flywheel on. And what else do I got bookmarked? One other thing in here. Oh yeah, I was wrong when I was telling you about the blade. I thought you had to line the blade up with the piston. Well, what you do is you bring the piston to top dead center and then they said to put a file mark on the end of the crankshaft and you want the blade 90 degrees from the piston at top dead center. So your piston's this way at the top and you want your blade 90 degrees from there. And that's supposed to help with vibration. If excess vibration exists with blade and stiffener balanced and knowing engine is not damaged, align blade with the piston. Follow steps listed. So yeah, oh, and here, there's the dowel pin too, the wooden dowel for cleaning the exhaust force. Remember I, I mentioned that? So yeah, there's a lot of good information in this old manual. I found this, I thought, I, I know I got a manual somewhere. Let me dig it out. And I also went upstairs and I found some seals, some crank seals. And that was the part number for this D601 engine. And these were made by Silver Streak. Remember Silver Streak replacement parts? And then it turned into Oregon. So look at this. This was all stuff I got from Brother Farrell. So here's these seals from Oregon. And here's the part number. They, you can't get these anymore from Oregon. They don't make them, they discontinued them. 5509-0, 5509-611-396. No way are these the same seals for this engine. I don't, something happened where they got mixed up. But I'm thinking when you went to order these, after they ran out of the Silver Streak ones, you got the wrong seal. They were probably getting tons of these back. Let's see, that's not the right seal for this lawn boy. So the reason we're gonna probably replace the seals too is when you have a two cycle engine, it's gotta be sealed. You can't have any leaks. If you have a vacuum leak, it's gonna create a problem. Usually it's gonna run lean and it's gonna score the piston. It's gonna burn it up. And it usually does it on the exhaust side. So the way to test for that is you're supposed to block off the exhaust and block off the intake. And then they make a tool where you take out the plug and you pump air into the cylinder, into the cylinder and crankcase. And then you have a gauge as you're pumping the air in. 
and it's supposed to hold pressure. If it leaks down, that means you've got a vacuum leak somewhere. This is the tool I got. You may have seen it before. You can buy these online. This adapter screws into the spark plug hole and then you pump up, pump this up after you block off the intake and the exhaust and it's supposed to hold pressure. And if it leaks down like it's doing now, you have to find that leak. So you're supposed to pump it up and hold it. And if it doesn't leak, then you're good to go. And you're, usually the way you find the leak is just spray soapy water around until you see where it's bubbling. So if you got a two cycle engine and you're having trouble with it and you think it's a carburetor problem and you put a new carburetor on and you've tried, I've tried everything and this thing still runs like crap. Chances are you got a vacuum leak somewhere because it's got to be sealed. It could leak from this gasket. You might have some bolts that are loose and it could be leaking. But in our case, I think that some carbon came loose and that scoring is from the carbon. So I'm going to use this gasket over. They do make new ones. I could have ordered one, but I don't, we don't have time. Got to get this video done and I didn't have any new ones. So what I'm going to do is after I put the piston on and put the rings on, I'm going to put a light coat of some black silicone on there. I'm not going to go crazy with it because then it wants to squish all out and get into places and we don't want it to get into the ports. So I'll put a very light coat of silicone and we'll lock it down. Now, one other thing, ring end gaps. Where do the ring end gaps go? Now, for those of you who know on like chainsaws and stuff, there's little pins in the piston so that the end gaps would go on those pins so the rings can't turn. And the reason they do that is they don't want the end gap to get caught in a port. Because if the end gap sticks out a little bit as the piston's going up and down, it gets caught in a port, it's gonna break the ring. So what Lawn Boy wants you to do, now if you notice, the piston says top. So this is the top of the engine. This is where the flywheel goes. So this piston's going to go back on like this. This is the top. We don't want it like this. And I've already put my snap ring back in, so when I put the piston on and tap it in and put my other snap ring in, the piston will be secured on there. So if you notice, in the bore, because here's our exhaust, which is going to be facing down because it goes through the deck, the top of the cylinder here, we've got a gap between these ports from here to here. So I'm going to put an end gap of one of the rings here, and I'm going to put the other end gap of the ring here. We're just going to stagger them like that. We're not going to stagger them 120 degrees from each other. We're not going to stagger them 90 degrees or 180 degrees, I mean, you know, across from each other, 120 degrees. Mm -hmm. 180 degrees would be right across because 90 and 90 is 180. And we're not going to go 90 degrees. We're going to go right from here to here on our end gap. So this would be the top of the piston. So we're going to put an end gap about there. And we're going to put the other end gap about there. And then I got my little bottle of two cycle oil and my little artist brush. So I'm going to get some oil. I'm going to put it on this needle bearing in here. I'm going to put it on this wrist pin and we're gonna put this all back together. One other thing I forgot to mention before I put the piston on is I checked the reed valves. Now I did that through the top here and the reed valves are good. 
once I get the cylinder back on, we're gonna take a peek inside the carburetor bolt. But I mean, you could always pull the reed plate off and check yours. But I was able to check mine through the top. Now I know what some of you are thinking, Terrell, Terrell, when you put those rings on, is there a way, a special way the rings go on? Like, is there a mark on the ring so you can't put it on upside down? These two cycle rings are perfectly square. So you can't mess it up. Now on four cycle engines, they usually put a dot on the ring so you know that the dot faces up. But this, this is the old ring, I got the new rings on there. But on these two cycles, especially this lawn boy, they're perfectly square. So it doesn't matter, it goes either way. Now on a chainsaw or something that has the pin, the locating pin for the rings, yes, those do have to go on a certain way because the end of the ring is ground so that the ring fits in that pin. So if you put that one on upside down and you go to collapse it, if it's on wrong, you're gonna ruin the end of the ring. But on this lawn boy, Two cycle, it doesn't matter. Either way, it can go. You're not gonna mess it up. So I went ahead and I took my artist brush and I coated the inside of the cylinder with some two cycle oil. And I also coated the inside of my ring compressor because this is my ring compressor. Now if you don't have a ring compressor, you might be able to just slide the the jug onto the piston because you have that little bit of a taper which kind of helps to squeeze the rings. So now I'm all ready, I got the piston installed, I got my end gaps where I want them. Now I'm gonna put that very light coat of silicone on this gasket and then we'll go ahead and put the cylinder on. Okay, and, and, scene. So on a lot of chainsaws and stuff, they make this tool too, which is this little fork slides in there to hold this up. So as you go to put the cylinder on, the crankshaft doesn't move and push the piston down. But we can't do that because there's not enough gap. So what I did is I put a pair of vice grips on here to hold this for me. So there's my end gaps. And then I'm gonna put this on. My piston ring compressor. And then there's my little white coat of silicone that's on there, which has been setting up for about five minutes. So now when I push on the cylinder, on the piston, I should be able to get this to go on. Got to give it a little wiggles worth. Just, you got to be patient or you're going to break a ring. If you're somebody who gets mad easily, you're not going to, you're not going to be successful in this. You're going to be breaking rings and throwing tools. And there's my dinner. Here comes my dinner. All right. Now I just gotta take my, my bolt, which I'm gonna put a little, little dab of blue Loctite on these. Then I'm gonna run the bolts in and then gradually tighten them. I'm looking that book and see if there's a torque spec. Now the trick with Loctite is your fastener's gotta be clean and dry. So brake clean or carb spray to clean the threads and the, and the threads it's going into, like the cylinder here. But since I washed this in soap and water, I already know these, these internal threads are clean. And we're gonna use our thread locker, which we sell in our online store. We have it in red and blue. This is the 10 milliliter bottle. We also have it in the 50 milliliter bottle. 
And the silicone I use, we also sell in our online store to Velco Cincinnati. This is the black I'm using, and then this is our tube gripper that we also sell. So if you're interested in them products, you can get them at our online store. So we want to use a very small amount because you don't want to get this stuff too much because if it gets seeps in and gets into places you don't want it to get into, it could wreak havoc. So I just need a very small amount. And then we'll go ahead and get these started, get all four of them started. And then we'll snug them down. I got it all bolted back together. I looked in the manual. The only torque spec they had was for the connecting rod. 60 inch pounds. No cylinder bolt torque spec in that manual, which is an actual lawn boy manual. See, Outboard Marine Corporation. That's weird. So I just tightened them as tight as I could get it. So I got the plug in, and listen, we got compression now. Hear that? That slurping noise. All right. So now that we got it in this position, I blew most of this off. After I get the engine remounted and all put back together, on the mower deck again, I'm gonna give it a good pressure scrubbing. So let's just take a quick peek in here and make sure it's all clean. I already put the new seals in. Oh yeah, look, nice and clean. That's good. Oh, this is just some plastic because these are like self-tapping plastic screws they use. So good. When we go to put some dinosaur syrup in there, mixed with dinosaur juice, because this is a two cycle. So we got to mix the syrup, the dinosaur syrup and the dinosaur juice from my ancestors because I'm a pterodactyl. I'm not a T-Rex. Pterodactyls and T-Rexes don't get along. I'm a pterodactyl. It took my family billions, not millions, billions of years so you could have syrup and juice. All right, so now I can go ahead, put the engine back on the deck, Reinstall all that governor weights and stuff. Put the coil back on, set the air gap with flywheel on, just put everything back on. And then you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Shut up! Good thing he ain't here. You're probably thinking, where's the fire it up guy? He ain't here. Well, I got the lawn boy all back together. And we're gonna show you some pictures of some of the stuff I did because the cameraman wasn't here. Like how I cleaned the muffkin, got the muffkin all nice and clean, got the deck all nice and clean, sharpened and balanced the blade, got the engine all clean, and then a couple shots of me reassembling it. Now on that governor, they uh, suggest you put a little grease on that collar and a little grease on that uh, metal washer that goes on there. So it looked like white grease they had on there, so that's what I used, the white grease. Um, I replaced the primer bulb. They make the primer bulb aftermarket. Stens makes it, and it's still available. Now look at this package. Look how old this package is. I had this package, I think, since 2008, maybe even earlier. That's how many lawn boys we've seen. So, it was a fresh pack, I cracked it open. Put a fresh bulb in there, the other one was starting to dry rot. New air filter, Oregon still makes it. 
I checked on it. I re replaced the fuel line and the primer line. Primer line was hard as a carp. So I used the Tecumish primer line, which comes in this box. There's the part number. That's what we get for it, a foot. I think there's 25 feet in this box. So your local dealer, you know, he may sell it by the foot like we do. And then the fuel line, I noticed had a kink in it. That's no good. And it was kind of hard. So I used the Stens True Blue, but instead of using the quarter inch, I used the 3 16 and it, uh, it fit on there a lot tighter. And then I also used the little uh, 3 16 or 5 16 whatever they are. They might be 5 16 What does it say on there? I can't read that. But that's the clamps I used. And he'll get a shot of those clamps. And we'll get you a part number for those clamps too, but they, they're on there tight. So, now all we have to do, as Elkskin says, is fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, shut up! So, I got the dinosaur juice and the dinosaur syrup mixture. And then I had to enlist the help of the colonel. And if you don't know who the colonel is, it's Colonel Brassy. Now I use this stuff. Somebody was, one of these door-to-door -door sales guys come in one day and sold me this stuff. And I thought, yeah, I'll buy it and try it. And it works pretty good. I use it quite a bit. So we use the colonel on a handle. It had some, some rust on there externally. So I just put some kernel on a Scotch-Brite pad and we got that rust, that external rust off the handle. So, I mean, it's not bad shape for as old as it is. I'm not gonna go ahead and restore it all. I'm not gonna get some green lawn boy paint and paint it. And I'm not gonna go and have, you know, cause one of these, one of these decals is missing on the other side. I'm not gonna go through a total restoration on it. I just wanted to get it running. But this would be a good mower for somebody now that it runs and works to do that. To maybe paint the deck and, and go to a graphics person and have them recreate these details. And I'm pretty sure these aren't the original wheels. I'm pretty sure the wheels were plastic, but they probably broke. So they went ahead and put the steel ones on. But you know, all you have to do is paint them white. So now all I have to do is fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Who says that? Yeah, that pesky Elskin. All right, I got the fuel valve open. Let's turn the switch on and let's prime this thing and fingers crossed it starts.
just started picking up some RPM after I had to keep pumping it, but who knows when the last time it is when it ran. So I got it set up all the way. I'm gonna set it down. Let's put it on free. It was easier to get my hand underneath it when I was putting the engine on to get the nuts on there when I dropped the engine back on. So I raised it all the way up as high as it could go. Oh, another thing I did I forgot to mention is I didn't have that new exhaust gasket. So I used our black silicone, which we sell in our online store, our Velco Cincinnati Black. I put some of that on there. So when I put the motor back on to make a good seal. So we got some grass out in front of the shop that needs to be cut. Let's take it out there and see how this old lawn boy will do. There's an adjusting screw on the side of this here carburetor. I'm going to open it up, see if I get a little more RPM out of it. Let's see if it'll start without priming or anything now that it's warmed up. much of a difference and it's pretty loose so I think I'll take it out put a little Teflon tape on it kind of make it a little stiffer but it's running at about 3,000 rpm I may have to mess with the speed a little bit to get it up higher I think 3,400 is what they want it to run at but that's a decent speed for a little push mower take it out and see how it cuts A nice little push mower for somebody. It's a nice little mower. Now we got it good and warmed up. See if it'll start again. It's for sale. Well, working on this old lawn boy brought back a lot of memories from when I worked at my brother Farrell's shop because over there, they used to say I was the lawn boy king. 
Whenever the lawn boys came in, I was the one that had to work on them over there. And I was only in high school back then, 1978. I was still in high school. So there it is. It's not too bad to work on. It was pretty easy fix. We haven't done a lawn boy, only because we didn't have any. And you know, I got my button on that says, I love my lawn boy. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All, that's me, the lawn boy lover. You know, there's, there's lover boy, and then there's lawn boy lover. Follow me with your lawn boys that you love on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store. We got Terrell Apparel. We got other products that we sell. Adhesives, Loctite, all kinds of stuff. Go check it out. Go to our web store. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Working on a lawn boy! Woo! I wish I wouldn't have thrown away all them lawn boy parts now. Probably some other good parts for this thing in there. Oh well, that's all scrap metal under the bridge. Oh, it's you again. Brandon, what do you need this time? I've got an easy one this time. Oh, and it's Brendan, not Brandon. Can you straighten this in your vise? It should only take a few seconds. I mean, I would do it myself, but I don't have a vise handy. Ha, huh, no. I'm not bending that blade back. I'll never be able to get it perfectly straight. Plus, it will be out of balance. Just buy a new one. Ah. <sighs> Well, how much is a new one? $15. What? Cheap, cheap, cheap. What was that noise? Oh, that's just that nest out there with birds in it. Do you want the blade or not? I got work to do. Okay, fine, give me a new blade. But I still think you can straighten this one. I remember last time I bought a blade, it was like $5. Really? Well, you better go buy a stockpile of them blades at that price. <sighs> All right, great. Hey, you want me to get rid of that old blade for you? Oh no, why? So you can take this one and bend it back straight and sell it to somebody else? I don't think so. I'm taking this one back with me. Good day, sir. Okay, well, see ya, Brandon. I, I mean, Brandon. This goes on all day long. Hey, check this out. Check out my sweet man bun. Hey, look at that. That keeps that hot hair off my red neck.